Happy Valentine's Day and welcome to Hollywood Headlines. I'm your host, Brittany Weir. Today we'll be talking about your top celebrity gossip, the top 10 activities couples do on Valentine's Day, and the worst Valentine's Day gifts. Hollywood Headlines starts right now. Welcome back to Hollywood Headlines, I'm Ben Shad. When you know, you know. In honor of Valentine's Day, Khloe Kardashian is opening up about her relationship with Tristan Thompson. The pregnant Keeping Up with the Kardashian star took to her website Tuesday to answer the fan question, how do you know that you found the one? Her answer to that was, I knew Tristan was the one very quickly. I have never felt so comfortable or so safe with someone. The mom-to-be gushed. Because of that, I took it very slowly and was cautious about how I went about us. I made sure we had very in-depth conversations. I wanted to make sure that those conversations were backed up by actions. As it turns out, Chloe and Tristan had a ton in common. Chloe adds, that being said, you cannot fake the energy or chemistry that you have with someone. That means more to me than any conversation. But you need that foundation for when the honeymoon phase is over. You still must have respect and a mutual love for one another. To watch more of their love story, tune in to Keeping Up with Kardashians, Sundays at 9 p.m. And a baby makes four. Good Morning America's Ginger Z had some big news to share on social media Friday evening. As it turns out, the meteorologist welcomed her second child with husband Ben Aaron. Her delivery came just one day after stepping out for the red dress Go Red for Women's Fashion Show at New York City's Hamsterdam Ballroom. In fact, the morning show veteran enjoyed a baby shower last Thursday on the set of Good Morning America. While no name was released at first, Ginger wrote Miles Macklin on Instagram with one of the first photos of her baby boy earlier this week. She also wrote, so good to be home with my boys in a separate Instagram post. The Good Morning America star also revealed baby Miles entered the world at 8 pounds, 7 ounces, and 21.5 inches. Last night, the premiere of The Bachelor Winter Games aired on ABC, and let's just say interesting is the best word we could think of to describe it. It all started with Trista and Ryan Sutter, the OG Bachelorette couple, carrying the lantern, which represents the flame of passion and love. No, we are not making this up. So here's how it all went down. The contestants competed in winter sporting events. The guys compete against guys, and the girls compete against girls. There are male and female winners of every event, and those two earn a date card. At the end of the games, champions will be crowned. The connections between the gorgeous cast members started instantly. Leslie and Dean immediately hit it off, as did Viviana and Kevin. However, Ashley I had her eye on Kevin, and Josiah and Allie had a steamy makeout session early on in the night. The first event took place at the Hermitage Club in Vermont, which was a biathlon that combined skiing and marksmanship. Kevin and Rebecca edge out the competition to become the first two winners of the games. Kevin chooses Viviana for his date, which causes Ashley I to break down in tears. Surprise, surprise. Rebecca chose Luke for her date, and they seem to hit it off pretty well. At the first rose ceremony, Chris Harris annou announces that three women and two men will be going home. The final roses go to Ashley I and Josiah. This means Laura, Zoe, Lauren, Jamie, and Eric are going home. Bachelor Winter Games airs on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. on ABC. Meghan Markle is ready for one more celebration before her wedding. The former Suits star recently said that her bachelorette party is all sorted, and she is really looking forward to the big bash. When Markle was asked specifically about what was planned, she didn't share any details. Her friends are planning the big party, and she puts full trust in them. As for Harry, he is also being kept in the dark on the specific plans for his bachelor party. A source close to the couple said, I'm sure William's got something up his sleeve. The couple will tie the knot on May 19th at St. George Chapel in Windsor Castle. 
so they only have three more months to finalize any other wedding details. The Olympics, diver Tom Daly and his screenwriter husband, Dustin Lance Black, took to social media on Wednesday to announce that they are expecting their first child. The couple posted a picture on Instagram holding up the sonogram shot. The caption said, Happy Valentine's Day. Black shared another photo writing a very happy hashtag Valentine's Day from ours to yours. The couple got married in May of 2017 at Bovey Castle in Devon, England. They had been dating for years prior to their 2015 engagement. The couple has not yet shared any more details regarding the baby or its due date. Major TV producer Ryan Murphy has officially declared he's making his move over to Netflix. Murphy has just signed a major deal with the streaming service to produce shows only for them for the next five years. The deal will start in July of this year. While this means that any future show produced by Murphy will be produced by Netflix, this doesn't necessarily mean that we have to say goodbye to his current series on FX and Fox. Sources have confirmed that all of Ryan Murphy's shows that are currently on air and still in the works will continue and air on their original networks, all with the producers directly involved. There is already word that he has a one Netflix show in development, which will star his favorite actress, Sarah Paulson. The star is set to play young nurse Ratchet, Ratchet, Ratchet in an original story for the character from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Murphy's decision to leave 21st Century Fox could possibly have a lot to do with the fact that it was recently acquired by Disney, to which he joked about it last month. He explained that while the deal was somewhat emotional, and for him, he may or may not have to put Mickey Mouse into American Horror Story, Murphy says, I haven't made a decision of where I'm going to go, but I'm going to wait and sit back. I'm hopeful. Ariel Kebble's sister, Julia Kebble, has been found safe just two weeks after she went missing. Kebble took to social media back on February 3rd with information regarding her sister's sudden disappearance. At the time, Julia was last seen three days before that, walking her dog in a Los Angeles neighborhood. According to local outlets, multiple fires were discovered in the sister's apartment the night she went missing, as well her personal belongings such as her purse and phone were left behind. On Tuesday, the actress wrote on social media, It's a new day, and it is with great joy and relief that I share the wonderful news that my sister Julia and her dog Cindy have been found safe. We are so grateful to every single person who helped spread the word and joined us in our search. We would also like to thank the Los Angeles Police Department, Class Kids, CERT Ministries, and Anonymity, Rescue for their effort in bringing Julia home. Julia is an employee of NBC Universal. Nearly a year after their split, singer Katy Perry and actor Orlando Bloom are rumored to be back together. A source said that this time, Katy wants to make things work. She tried, but she couldn't cut him off. She cares too much about him, and this time, they're keeping it low-key. Last month, the two were reportedly enjoying a romantic getaway in the Maldives. Fans spotted them together and revealed that they were both staying at the same resort. Katie and Orlando have become more open with their relationship, even liking and commenting on each other's Instagram photos. Over the summer, the two sparked reconciliation rumors after they were seen attending an Ed Sheeran concert in Los Angeles. At the time, fans spotted the two sharing kisses while the singer sat on the actor's lap. We hope it goes well for the rumored couple in the future. Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps and his wife, former Miss California USA Nicole Johnson, have welcomed their second baby boy. Beckett Richard Phelps, who was born on February 14, 2018, they, they announced the arrival of their new baby boy on their firstborn Boomer Phelps' Instagram page with the caption, I am officially a big bro. All I want to do is hold him. I can't wait till I get to teach him so many cool things about the world. Hashtag big bro. This was followed by Michael sharing a heartwarming message on his Instagram that said, Magical moments yesterday. Nicole and I would like to introduce Beckett Richard Phelps to the world. We had a healthy baby boy and a healthy mama. I truly do feel like the happiest man in the world. Being able to build our family to now four, six with doggies is so incredible. Hashtag family of four now. Congratulations to the happy couple and the now big brother boomer on the new addition to their family. More than a year ago, Natalie Portman visited Ellen DeGeneres for an interview 
At the time, the actress was pregnant with her second child, and the curious comedian wanted to know the sex of the baby. Portman claimed not to know what she was having, but DeGeneres had a hunch that the star was going to have a girl. So the two agreed to a bet of $1,000 and pizza. Portman said, food-related bets I will always take. Well, fast forward two months later, and the Jackie star gave birth to her daughter, Amelia Millipede. The, this made Ellen the champion of their bet. On Wednesday, the women reunited on DeGeneres' show to talk about Portman's upcoming movie. The actress paid up by donating $1,000 to the Ellen DeGeneres Wildlife Fund. Stick with us because when we come back, we will have the 10 best activities couples do on Valentine's Day. Hollywood Headlines will be right back. Welcome back to Hollywood Headlines. We are now going to take a look at the top 10 activities couples do on Valentine's Day. Coming in at number 10 is that couples play hooky on Valentine's Day, probably to spend time with each other. Number nine is couples sending their significant other on a scavenger hunt. Most couples find this fun, but often challenging, and the hunt usually ends in some sort of present. The next one up is couples often on Valentine's Day will either stay home or go out and recreate one of the other's favorite dates that the two have shared. Number seven on the top ten list is that couples give massages to each other. Sometimes if one is stressed, Valentine's Day massages can often help make their day just a little bit more romantic. Coming in at number six of things to do on Valentine's Day is for couples to go on a trip somewhere together. They either choose to go to a park, go on a hike together, or sometimes even go to a different country. Number five is watching the sunset or the sunrise together is among the list top things couples do on Valentine's Day. It's just a way for couples to spend time together in a romantic way. Counting on the countdown at number four is to go on a romantic picnic. Couples can go find a nearby park or romantic hike and have a picnic with some of their favorite snacks. Coming in at number three is of course buying gifts for one another, whether it be chocolate, flowers, a bear, or maybe even paying for someone else's half apps. It's all so romantic. Second on the list is, of course, the good old stay in and watch Netflix. Who needs to go out and spend money on an expensive dinner when instead they can sit home and catch up on their Netflix list? We're sponsoring Netflix right now. Claiming its title in the number one spot of things couples do on Valentine's Day is couples cooking dinner at home together or going out to a dinner, just the two of them. And here we are. Here we are. So. Have you done any of these activities today? What do you think? I'm going to go with a, a no. Yeah, yeah that's, okay, that's no, safe okay. to assume. That's I'm going to ass assume. assuming that <laughs> we are both uh, single this year, but we mm -hmm. haven't done any of these things. But the Netflix one I thought was really funny because, as your shirt says, yes. um, <laughs> I think it's always great to just sit in, you know, catch up on your shows because you can't watch the episode without your couple. Like, if you guys are watching a show together, Valentine's Day, I feel like, is a perfect day to, like, you know, catch up on your episodes so the one person doesn't feel like, I need to watch this episode without you. Yeah, that's a, one, that's a lot of things I hear, but that's also something that I feel can happen on any other day. Like, I don't that's feel like true. it has to be a strictly Valentine's Day thing. Yeah. Like, the massage, that one was very intriguing. Like, <laughs> I feel like, you know, <laughs> treating, like, you don't have to do it yourself, but, you know, there's definitely, like, you know, a spa gift card or, like, treating each other to, like, a spa yeah. day or something like that. I feel like that's a really good Valentine's Day gift. I wouldn't mind get yeah. one of those uh, anytime in the future. But uh, that one was very intriguing to me. Um, the hiking one, the yeah. like, camping and hiking one, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Because it's still cold outside relatively, at least right now. At but least like, where we are, yeah, it's pretty cold. But I think it'd still be, it'd still be fun. It'd be a good activity to do. Get outside, you know, get some exercise in there. I think I did that once on a date, and we made, like, so this ties in, like, the picnic part, too. We went on a hike, mm -hmm. and we brought food with us. And then we just like sat on and like had a picnic there too. So we put like two together. Oh, yeah, nice. and like it was pretty cool. And I liked that. So I liked that idea. Did you also tie the sunset into that too? No. Because those were like, th you could pack three of those top yeah, ten into one. Three. Oh, that would have been awesome. A but no, we had, we had to go out to dinner. We had places to be, things like that. So we just went, hiked, had a picnic. It was cool. Sat and saw, it was like a beautiful view. So it was cool. Hmm. So yeah. Um, but yeah, and then what was the other one? Oh, the typical, you know. Buy chocolate yeah. or a stuffed animal or flowers or have fun. 
or half apps. You're you, you're kind of shaking your head at the half apps. I'm kind of you've. I'm sorry. You've never partaken in buying someone else's half apps. No, or? I've never bought someone else's half apps, and they've never bought it for me. But if they did, I wouldn't really care. Like it's not like a big um, deal to me. I guess. Really? Yeah. That's like second base for millennials or something like that nowadays. Anyway, so like, you know. <laughs> Wow, it takes a lot to get somebody these days. Yeah. A lot of effort. <laughs> Applebee's half apps is all you need. That's a key to anyone's oh, heart, really. I love the effort. It's great. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Yeah, no, I would prefer, like, the chocolate and the flowers over that. But it's yeah, that's, that's always the traditional way to go. Yeah, I think that's pretty traditional. But um, as for today, yeah, I haven't done any of these things, and I don't plan on doing them today. My plans later are just to go with my family and have dinner because that's how we celebrate my Valentine's. Day. That's nice. Yeah. I'm just straight up talking to people, nothing special already. Yeah, but hey, fingers crossed that open. something happens in the future. You never know. Options open. All right, that's it for our discussion right here. And when we come back, we have plenty of activities to talk about. Stick around, Hollywood Headlines. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hollywood Headlines. We are now going to take a look at five of the worst Valentine's Day gifts given to women. Coming in at number five, one woman claims her boyfriend gave her a live tarantula as a present. A poll revealed some of the worst ever presents received on this holiday, one including a tin of baked beans. Sounds good to me. Some of these couples should be rolling in their gifts. One female says she was given a wheelbarrow by her significant other. I wonder if that was like an accident or something. Um, but one woman was disappointed to receive a plastic sheep by her husband on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and finally, one of the worst gifts a woman got from her other half was a torch. Well, all we can hope is that their Valentine's Day was lit. The script's words, not mine. The plastic sheep. What are you going to, to do with like, a plastic sheep? That has to be like a European thing or something like that. Like, I know they love sheep over there. Like, no, he, like, he definitely, like, drove her home from work and was like, oh, no, today is Valentine's Day. So, like, <laughs> just saw the first thing on the side of the road and was like, I will give you $10 for this plastic sheep on your lawn. Yes. And the deal was done. He definitely saw it, took it, and goes, here you go, honey, I got you this. Thinking, like, she'd be like, oh, my God, it's so cute. But, like, it's a, <laughs> it's a plastic, plastic sheep. sheep. You really couldn't do anything better? Like, maybe go to, like, a park and pick flowers out of a bush? Like, that'd be better than a plastic sheep. But Not even, like, not. dandelions off the side of the road or anything I mean, like that. How do you too. give someone a torch? That's what I want to know. How do you, like... Well, what are they into? Maybe they're into, um, welding? I well, don't know. You can't weld with a torch. I don't know. I'm trying to make maybe, logic out of it. I don't know. Maybe they like cavemen or something like that. But, like, I just saw gift and then torch. I'm like, I feel can't. like I would, like, burn him with it. Sorry. I'd be like, what is this? <laughs> uh, love's so good, you have to commit arson for it. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I'd be like, are you kidding me? This is what I get? Oh, my gosh. You ever receive a bad Valentine's Day gift? <sighs> or maybe um, just a bad gift in general? Oh, I've received, received my fair share of bad gifts. Um, <laughs> but... Let's think Valentine's Day. Um, the one year the guy I was with didn't even didn't get me flowers, and that was kind of like I feel like that's like a typical Valentine's Day thing you're supposed right, to that's, do. Right. That's like the like, baseline right? requirement like, of like Valentine's you get Day. Flowers, and he didn't. And I was like talking to my mom later on the phone. She's like, "Oh, what do you get you?" I'm like, "Oh, like a bag of M and M's," which you know I love M and M's. And she was like, "Aren't you upset he didn't get you flowers?" I was like, "The waiter at the restaurant gave me a rose. Does that count?" Like, <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know. You need the fine. waiter to step in for him? Well, the waiter, they were, like, giving out roses at the restaurant. And I was like, I got a flower. Like, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> but, I don't know. I don't think I got any bad Valentine's Day gifts. I, don't, I mean, Valentine's Day is pretty standard, I guess. Except for these people that don't know what they're doing. I was, <laughs> so. I was talking with our switcher, Noah, today. And he was telling us a story about how there's this guy who goes to different places on Valentine's Day and pretends that his date stood him up. So he'll sit at a table for, like, two hours and just wait there and then the waiter will come by and check on him and like he'll drink all of his water and then the waiter will be like oh you know is she coming anytime soon and he's like yeah it'll be she'll be here just give it a second and then like another like 30 minutes goes by and this guy tried it and apparently he live tweeted the whole thing and he ended up being somewhat successful he got half off his dinner and a uh, free dessert and he just faked his date he even went so far as to when the waiter wasn't looking 
he like put his finger in the water and like gave himself fake tears. Oh my god! When they came around later what on. What people will do <laughs> for free food or just even have off their food? Well, the That's sad part now is that there's going to be single guys who are just jerks going into fancy restaurants yeah. and getting half off their That's dinners so when there's legitimate people with couples trying to go exactly. to a nice dinner on Valentine's Day and there's just all these single tables with guys pretending to cry oh my because gosh. their fake dates didn't show up. That That's ridiculous. I've never heard of that. It's clever, but now, now it's kind really of a You really have nothing better to do move. with your time? You sit at a restaurant <laughs> for two, three hours maybe and be like, I hope they give me something for free. I mean, if it's a really fancy dinner, I can understand. I mean, I'm not going to sit two hours for half apps. But no, no, if I'm like, you know, that. if this is a place where you have to, you know, wear a certain suit and make reservations and stuff like that, I, I might gamble with it. Okay. Just to see, just to see what happens. Yeah, if you're willing to do that. Not, not me. I'm good. Um, but that's all the time that we have for today's show. I'm your host, Brittany Weir. I'm your co-host, Ben Shad. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. We'll see you next week.